So as you all already mentioned in your own comments, um, systems are going to have to prioritize and ramp down some spending to sustain what's working, grounded in evidence and research. This means that systems must be able to fully cost out strategies, as we said earlier, develop a theory of action, and then use consistent progress monitoring to know what's working and then how to keep improving. Because as you'll see in a second, it's important that systems have a way of constantly monitoring and measuring what's working before it, you know, it goes on for too long. So let's go to the next slide. So, at, you know, for those of you who were here last meeting, I know that typically the outcome on a return on an investment system is we always want to look for student outcomes. And yes, that is absolutely tremendously important. And, you know, waiting for the outcome data for it to be analyzed and evaluated can oftentimes take a long time. Uh, and our LEA leaders don't always have that time, especially if you think about this moment where ESSER and ESF, uh, the window closes. As we heard from system leaders last meeting, we had leaders here from Lubbock in Texas and Metro Nashville in Tennessee. They're not waiting for outcome data to make prioritization decisions. They're actually needing to rely on thinking about impact, like what is working, what is not. And this is an example of, you know, they're looking at implementation metrics. So short-term examples of you know, is the program being implemented with fidelity? Is it being taken up at the rates that we wanted it to? Do kids have access to it? What are the leading indicators, satisfaction, short-term growth, bright spots that we think will lead to outcomes? Now, again, I'm saying something that maybe is controversial, but our systems can't always wait for the, the longer-term outcomes. Therefore, we have to make sure that we have a clear sense of what we're trying to solve for, like what is it we're actually trying to do? And then what's our theory of action? What are the actual steps that we think we have to take along the way? Because that's what we're gonna be measuring. That's what we're gonna be thinking about to be able to understand is the impact, are we having the impact that we wanna have? Next slide, please. So I'm gonna take us through this short, what we call a system strategy, return on investment approach. So let's see. So there we go. My screen was freezing a little bit. All right. So I'm going to walk us through an example here. So typically, you know, and a lot of times it's the finance leader in the system. Shout out to the finance leaders. Someone will come up to them and say, hey, I want to run a new summer school program to serve kids in our district. So the systemic strat the system strategy ROI would have you say, okay, so first one is what's the fundamental student need that we're trying to improve? And then which students or schools are we focusing on? So trying to get a little bit more specific. So in, in this case, it might be, okay, what we actually want to focus on is improving literacy scores and also just literacy of our middle school kids, let's say seventh and eighth graders. And we want to focus on running a summer school program that would serve 250 students. So again, let's get a little more refined on what is it we're trying to solve for? What's the core need? And who are we trying to uh, serve here? The second is before jumping to like, what's it gonna cost? So are there specific strategies we're already using to address this core need? Again, if you're coming in saying the core need is to run a summer school program, that's one thing. But if what you're saying is the core need is to solve how we're supporting literacy development in seventh and eighth grade students, you're probably doing a lot already. So you want to pause and say, what are the specific strategies we're already doing? And in addition to the summer school program, what else could we be doing? Not that it's going to shut down the idea, but it is important to think about this more broadly. And so we're not thinking about just an initiative, but what is everything you're already doing in your system supporting this goal or not? And so you may be thinking about, hey, what are you doing during the school day? You know, if you think about the trade-offs you're already starting to set up, is summer school to support literacy development the highest leverage? Are there others, uh, ways that you're using uh, expert support for teachers and students, intervention periods? You're really trying to get a handle of what are the broad range of strategies that you can consider? The third is then, okay, so as you've thought about those things, What's a specific, what are the specific actions that this strategy requires? So 
creating a logic model we think is really important because ultimately these become the things that you're measuring along the way. These become your implementation benchmark leading indicators that are getting you to the outcomes that you require. So after you lay out a, a, an articulate uh, or articulate a logic model, and again, we want you to be detailed here, lay those steps out, then you think about what are the costs and you investigate sustainability. So what's the full cost now and over time of the initiative that we're trying to run? And how can we do this more cost effectively? We're going to come back to this in a second. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Then after you do those, the fifth step is you have to define metrics for evaluating success. So how will we know if we are implementing our strategy? Now, notice the word implementing here. Oftentimes, if we think about waiting for outcome data, what we actually end up finding is that the implementation was just never done in the way that we designed it to. That's why it's really important to lay out your logic model. What are the actions that you need to take and things that need to be in place for an initiative to, to actually take hold? And when you're defining metrics and evaluating success, I would argue you name what are some of the implementation metrics that you really want to make sure you're paying attention to. So if you're targeting 250 seventh and eighth graders, are students, teachers, or stakeholders actually participating in the rates you expected? Are we implementing the program in the way that you designed? You want some leading indicators. You know, that could be satisfaction of the folks that are in the program. You may have formative assessments that you're using along the way to measure how students are learning or not that you want to be able to make tweaks to. And then absolutely, you want to have some outcome metrics that you use as well. But I guess, you know, what, what I'm also pointing out is that we can't only rely on the outcome metric. We have to be able to pay attention throughout the whole cycle so that you're able to make adjustments um, along the way. All right, that's a lot. Uh, I do wanna go to one more slide as we think about the sustainability. You know, when you're costing out implementation of investments, it's really important to think about the full cost. So again, back to the example of someone saying, I wanna run a summer school program. What are the full costs? So it's not just the costs you know, of teachers for the program, but what are the costs for special education supports or transportation, food service, building operations, other staff? Really important that you know we're able to make sure that we're sizing those all the way, because ultimately when you're thinking about sustainability, those are the kinds of things that you really want to pay attention to. All right, and then let's go to slide, we're gonna skip one slide and go to slide 26. All right, so what started as a, hey, I wanna run a summer school program, and actually, as you sort of prodded and poked a little bit became, we actually wanna support literacy development and our seventh and eighth grade students. You lay out a few things here. So the summer school strategy is there, but you've identified two others, high dosage tutoring throughout the school year and reducing class sizes in your reading and language arts. So you wanna lay it out here in a way that's you know relatively simple for system leaders to be able to look at. You look at the specific actions, the target population, your likelihood of achieving intended impact. Now, this is based on your evidence base. So what, are, what do evidence-based practices suggest are the impacts of summer school or high dosage tutoring or reducing class sizes? And then what's the estimated cost per pupil? This allows you to see that, you know, for the goal that you had of improving literacy rates, there may be different strategies. And at the end of the day, you may decide to go with summer school when you look at a variety of factors, but really important to make sure that we're able to think about, you know, a variety of ways that we want to be able to support our students, not just, you know, it's a decision around summer school or not. It's actually a much more, you know, in-depth conversation around different ways to meet the needs of students.